Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to this video tutorial on ASP.NET Web APIs. In this video tutorial, I will show you how you can integrate ASP.NET Identity System within your Web API. Open up Visual Studio and then create a new project. Right click on your solution and you can add a new project. For the project, we will select Web and we will select ASP.NET Web Application dotnet framework we will name this project as asp dotnet underscore identity and then we will use dotnet framework 4.7.1 click ok here we will select an empty project template and we will click on web api and then we will click OK. Visual Studio will create the project for us. A project has been created. In order to implement ASP.NET identity within our Web API application, we need to add some packages. So the first thing we would do is we would add all required packages for our application. To add packages, we can click on our project, right click on our project and select manage nugget packages we will be installing the following packages so go ahead pause the video and install the following packages after you have completed installing these packages you can start watching back the video once the packages have been installed you can go ahead and close your nugget package manager and now we are going to create a folder called as infrastructure under our project ASP.NET Identity. So right click and create a new folder called as infrastructure. Now we will define our first custom entity framework class, which is known as the application user class this class will denote that the users within our application want to register into our membership system we will use this class to extend the default properties that are available under the identity user class now what do i mean by extend the properties Within the identity framework, we are made available some properties like username, password, email, and we can use these properties for our members, those who register in, within our application. But let's say you're building an application that requires some other properties. If this was a student application, I would need to create some extended properties like student number, course code, program code, and so on. For that, I would need to create an additional class called as the application user class. And I would add those extended properties within that class. All these properties that, will, that we will be creating within this class will be converted into database columns, data table columns within our database. We will see that how as we proceed within this tutorial but for now let's go ahead and create our extended property class if your application doesn't have any extended properties and you just want to use the default properties you don't need to create this class but it's always good to have this class so let's add this class and let's name this class as application user Since our application class is an extension class to our identity user class, as it is extending the properties, our application class needs to derive from the identity user class. You see this error because our reference is missing. So you can just hover over it and then click and add the using statement, which is Microsoft ASP.net.identity.framework entity framework and the reference would be added and we'll no longer see this error so now let's go ahead and create our extended properties so within this class I'm going to add few properties like first name last name of the user and also his joining date when the user join what level 
what is the level of the user so these are some extended properties that i will create if you wish to you can add your own properties as well and any properties that you will create here a database a table column will be created under the database a table known as aspnet users so as i told you we will see that as we proceed so let's go ahead and create the properties first so i have created the list of properties that i need for my users and i have uh, annotated these properties with some uh, attributes uh, like required and max length required because i all the users that register within for within my application need to have a first name last name and the application needs to provide them a user level and also we need the date when the user registered for our application so and that's the reason why i have used the attribute required you would need to reference the library that is system.component.model.data annotation in order to use these attributes i've also provided another attribute called as max length of 50 for first name and last name that's because i don't want my users to i just want to limit them to 50 characters i don't want them to type like a whole paragraph for their first name so i'll limit them only to 50 characters so that's it for our application user class now we will create another class that will be our database context class this class will basically help us to communicate with our database So right click on my infrastructure folder and I'm going to add a class. I'm going to name this class as application DB context. This class will be responsible for communicating with the database. Since this class will be responsible to communicate with the database, we would need this class to be deriving from our identity DB context. and we would need to provide the reference for our entity framework we also need to provide which class would it be referring it referring to in order to communicate with the database and which table or column so in that case we we need to specify it would be communicating in reference to our application user manager class apologize application user class and here within this class we are going to create a constructor uh, I hope all of you are familiar that uh, as soon as an object is created of a specific class the first thing that will execute is the constructor so the constructor for this class will be also called as application db context now since this class is inheriting from identity db context the constructor will run the base constructor of the identity db context class and therefore i need to reference it to the base constructor now when it calls the base constructor of its uh, of the class identity db context it will require two parameters first is the connection name and second is whether to throw if throw the schema that means if the if it finds out if there's a different version of identity asp.net identity being used then it will throw an exception in that case first of all we will change this to false because we don't want it to throw any exception and here we need to specify our connection name we have not yet created our connection but we can at least name our connection at this point and we can use the same name when we create our connection so let's name our database connection as default connection and that should be it for these two parameters and within the body of our constructor we are going to specify a few properties first 
is configuration dot proxy creation enabled we are going to change it to false and configuration dot lazy loading enabled we are going to change it to false as well so that's it for our constructor now let's go and create a static method I will tell you later as we proceed why we need this static method but as of now just go ahead and create this static method we'll name this method will return an object of type application db contacts and we will name this method as create all this method is going to do is return a new object of type application db context so every time the object is created the base constructor will run which will connect with the default connection that's specified so that's it for our db context class and now we would go ahead and proceed with creating our connection string